Charlotte Twins fans. Welcome back to another episode of From Lee to Limestone. I'm Matt Lenz with Twins Daily, coming at you with week four of the Arizona Fall League, as well as a deep dive into Ben Ross. So let's get into the Arizona Fall League first. So a busy week for our pitchers. Multiple guys got multiple appearances. We had lots of innings to look at. And so unfortunately, we don't have any video highlights here. So here's just kind of summary of what happened. Kay Bray got into two different games this week, four and two thirds innings. He had a six to three strikeout to walk ratio, plus a hits bat batsman, plus a hit. So he, he struck out six guys, allowed five base runners, was able to get out of those jams and gave up zero earned runs. So a little bit of a messy week for Cade Brigg, but ultimately got out of those pinches there. Jack Noble also appeared in two games, five innings combined, three hits, one earned run, and a three to two strikeout to walk ratio. So just a solid week there. Liam Roca, one appearance, but did get two and two thirds innings of action in. One hit, one earned run, a two to two strikeout to walk ratio. Then we look at the knuckleballer, Devin Kirby, kind of a messy week for him. Two innings pitch, two hits, two earned runs, two walks to zero strikeouts. And then Jacob King also had a bit of a messy week. One inning pitch, three hits, two earned runs, and a two to zero strikeout to walk ratio. So again, kind of a busy week for our pitchers. Uh, none of them did overly great, um, but got a lot of innings in in one week of action of the Arizona Fall League. Now, looking at the hitters, Kalai Rosario, the Twins' top prospect that's there, a very rough week for him, 494 OPS across 15 at-bats, the second week in a row that he's had zero extra base hits now. Uh, he, he went into week three, so about two weeks ago, he went into week three being the leader, and now he's gone on a little bit of a dry spell. And he's kind of back to his, his MO, six to one strikeout to walk ratio, and so that's not really what we want to see from him, you know, entering his second year at, at the Arizona Fall League. Again, he's pretty young. I mean, this is a league kind of consisting of a lot of double A type guys, which is where he played last year. And he was about three years younger than the average hitter there. So he's pretty young for the level. But again, just we're, we're wanting him to tame those strikeouts a little bit. And in weeks two and four now, um, his strikeout to walk ratio has not been very good. Now, let's get into Ben Ross. And the reason why I, I particularly want to do a deep dive, because on previous shows, I've said he's not really a prospect. And I'm going to backtrack a little bit off of something that I saw in Baseball Prospectus from Boomer Princeton. And that's, he said that his upside is that of a solid regular, which I, I you know, I haven't watched Ben Ross to be completely transparent, but I also haven't uh, I also haven't seen that just kind of looking at some of his, his batted ball data and, and, and statistics and everything like that. So maybe there's a little bit of eye test here. But he even said that he saw maybe a little bit of, of J.J. Hardy in him, which again, that, I mean, that was a very solid regular at the major league level. And so that just surprised me. So I wanted to do a little bit of, of, of a deep dive here. And so this week in the, in the AFL, he had a 736 OPS, which is Pretty solid. A uh, double, a home run, four RBIs, four runs scored, one stolen base, and a four to one strikeout to walk ratio. So nothing MVP worthy, but just a very solid week for Ben Ross. He was a fifth round pick out of 2022. So he does have a little bit of draft capital there, but he doesn't really have any prospect pedigree. He entered this last season as a borderline top 30 prospect for the Twins. And then once the draft happened, he quickly fell out of that mix. At AA, he was 23, so you know, mostly age appropriate for that level. He had a 626 OPS, 11 home runs, 20 stolen bases, but a really high strikeout rate and a really low walk rate. That's not something that you want, really want to combo, obviously. What might be more concerning is that his contact rate at AA was 67%. That's probably about 10 points lower than really what you want to see at that level. Um, so that's a huge uh, gap there and in terms of what needs to happen and what is happening. We need to see a lot more contact from him if he really has the, the upside of a future MLB regular, in my opinion. Defensively, he's just a super utility guy, can play most anywhere in the infield, most anywhere in the outfield, and he has and the athleticism, athleticism to do that as well. So you know how much the Twins love those types of players, and that's the type of player that Ben Ross is, can just play wherever you put him in the lineup. Um, but I just, I don't know if I see that upside of a, a regular there, but remains to be seen. Would be really interesting for him to develop in that way. It could be a very valuable Willie Castro type player, but maybe more of like a coming off the bench type instead of what Willie Castro has done for the last two years. But again, just an interesting quote from Boomer Princeton of Baseball Perspectives that made me want to do a little bit of a dive into Ben Ross. So there you have it. Do you see the upside there? Let me know in the comments. 
Let me know on Twitter at Lenzi2108.